Hello, thank you so much for stopping by to hang out with me today. I'm Lisa, and I thought in today's video, we could just do a fairly quick, or probably not so quick, because we know I talk a lot, as I say in every video, <laughs> um, video going through some sewing patterns that I picked up over the last, I would say about three months or so. I have some big four, and then also some indie patterns. As I've told y'all before, um, I decluttered a lot of my wardrobe, kind of reevaluated what makes sense for my lifestyle, so on and so forth, because I do live in the mountains. I'm a hobby homesteader, work a nine to five, need some good just... Just need some good basic patterns. And there's always chaos going on every time I turn on the camera. I'll be right back. So my cat bumped into the TV. He was stretching and it hit the wall. And then Miko, my little Papillon Pomeranian, had to make sure everything was fine. And now my tower garden's going off. <laughs> but anyways, so yeah, so essentially I was just trying to kind of recalibrate my wardrobe, as I've said before. And I'm going to start inserting some photos of some different styles and designs that I have used as kind of inspiration to start to rebuild my wardrobe. And I'll include some photos when I show you some of these patterns. If I'm being totally honest, I don't remember why I actually purchased a few of these patterns. I, I know, I don't know about you all, but it's something that I like to do to kind of keep things organized. I'm not a very digital person. I like pen and paper. I like physical vision boards, things like that. But in my Instagram, I will save photos of um, style inspiration and I'll make a subcategory for that. And I'll also save photos for patterns that I want and I'll make a subcategory for that. So I do that and then when I feel like I'm in a kick to go look at patterns or I see maybe a designer's having pattern sales, I'll just go back and look at my little saved um, Instagram photos to see which patterns I want. Um, so I know some of these came from here things, but I grabbed all these and um, I'll link everything in the description box below. And so yeah, so we'll just kind of start going through it all. Um, I have a few other patterns that I still would like to get from um, like Simplicity McCall's, but I just haven't purchased them yet. I'm waiting, waiting for them to go on sale again. Um, if you're new to sewing, because most of you probably know this, but if we're in the States, um, Joanne Fabrics often has sales where uh, McCall Simplicity and Butterick patterns go down to $1.99 and then the Vogue patterns will go down, at least at ours, they go down to $5.99. Um, so you can just keep a lookout for that. I've honestly kind of given up on doing that. Um, our local Joanne's just, it's atrocious with the restock and I'd have to drive like an hour and a half to get there. And the last, I don't know, five or six times I've gone to look at the stale sales, the patterns are so picked over um, and they just don't restock them. So it's just like, do I spend the money on the gas or do I just pay a little extra and buy them when they're in sale online? But they do often have sales on the Simplicity website, which is the uh, website you'll find Vogue, McCall's, Butterick, Berta, all that, um, where you can get patterns for like $3.99. So that's what I did. So the first pattern that I picked up is McCall's M7970. And I picked this up specifically for this version here. I'm gonna show you the line drawing in the back just so you can get some ideas. Um, I really like a lot of these variations. I like this kind of bell sleeve here. I think you could actually make a really cute, uh, slightly cropped top if you omitted the skirt part. So not that this has a top variation, but I do like having these kind of, would you maybe call these flutter sleeves or bell sleeves? I don't, I can bell. Um, and then I do like this uh, skirt variation. This is what really caught my eye. I like this slit here and um, I like the wraparound style of the dress. And yeah, so there's a couple of different styles. Um, it's kind of interesting the placement of the tiers as well. It's not just kind of a basic tiered skirt. So I just thought this was a, an interesting pattern and I definitely want to make this version here and I want to do something with these sleeves here at some point. Um, I'm not certain actually if this is really a true wrap dress. I don't think it is. I think this is kind of like the, the faux wrap where it's actually um, stitched together here. But anyway, so this was the first pattern I thought was an interesting dress. And I, I do like dresses when they have like a, a, a summer and also winter variations when you have a sleeve and a sleeveless. Um, I don't really make a lot of dresses with sleeves. I usually just wear cardigans, but it is nice to feel like you've got multiple um, variations that you can make with a pattern. This next one here, I don't remember why I purchased it, but it's M7802. I think it was for this variation here. Um, so as I've mentioned before, there's a brand called, um, I would say Chintamani Alchemistry, but it's Chintamani 
Alchemy. I'm still probably saying it wrong. And a brand A.S. Sacred Wear. I mentioned them a lot. Um, they have a couple of dresses that are kind of like this and also kind of like this style too with the high slits. And so um, I think this is just kind of a, a cool breezy summer sundress. It'd be nice in some kind of like a lightweight linen or something like that. Um, the next dress pattern that I purchased, actually it's a skirt and top. It's the um, Meg brand and it's Simplicity S9894. I think this is super cute. Um, I really like this top. It's nice to, again, make separates. As I always say, I really like to make separates. I wouldn't make a skirt this short. I don't know. I'm weird about, like, it's not like a modesty situation issue or anything, but I don't know. I like dresses that either hit like right below the knee or like midway down here. I don't know. I just don't like really short skirts if it has to be the right skirt. So I really like this top and then um, a skirt like this. And here we can see the line drawing here. Unfortunately, you can't see the front of the top. Um, it kind of looks like kind of a, a corset style of top, but here you can see the line drawings, at least for the back of the top, as well as the skirt. But I think this is just a really cute uh, summer set, and I think this would be a fun one to make up. And then this next one is Simplicity 85. Four nine. I don't know why my brain's not computing numbers right now, but I thought this one was really interesting. I like the four different top varieties that you can make. I like the open back here. Um, I don't typically wear sh tops that are this short, so I'd probably lengthen this, but I do like these, um, these kind of tops. I think that would look really cute with skirts or whatnot. And here you go. You can see that there's a few different options in the back. So I thought this was cool. It looks like it's I'm assuming a very easy pattern since it's called one of the learn, learn to sew the trends. So I don't know, but yeah, I thought that was interesting. And then this next one, um, I think this is really cute. It's a little, little booby, but, um, it's McCall's M8407. I'm really intimidated by knits. I have a few patterns for knits. I have some knit fabric, still haven't made a knit. I don't know why, but I really like this top and I think it's a perfect top. I wear a lot of wrap skirts or a lot of like flowy kind of peasant skirts in the summer and I like to have basic tops and I just really like the cut of this. And if you don't necessarily like it this modest, you could, I would assume, easily be able to make more of a square neckline if you just modify these pieces here. Um, of course, you have to take in the fit and, and factor that in, but there's probably ways you can make it look more modest. But I like, I like this kind of style. I think it's kind of cute. And you have a bodysuit variation or you have just a normal shirt variation, which I would do the shirt. I don't know about y'all, but I'm not really a huge fan of wearing bodysuits. It's you know, I retired and they're cute, but I retired my leotard days when I quit dancing competitively when I was in junior high. And I don't know, I just, I can't get into the bodysuit thing. Even when I, I own some and I never snap them. I don't know. This next one is a Vogue pattern. It's V9311. And I saw, oh gosh, what is her name? I'll link her or I'll put her um, socials, uh, a picture of her dress she made with this up here and link her below. She has a, a nice little YouTube channel and an Instagram. She made a really cute variation with this this dress here, but she used more of like the bell sleeves, kind of like in the, the dress that I showed you earlier, kind of like, um, or flutter sleeves, whatever you call these, kind of like that. And it was a really cute dress and I thought this might be fun more for the fall month. So maybe I didn't need to necessarily buy it now, but, um, and I'm, this is pretty low cut. So I think I'd probably do a little modification there. So I don't have a full cleavage situation going on. Um, and then this next one that I thought might be interesting to share, it's Simplicity S8875. And um, I think this is really pretty. I like this kind of, um, I guess you call it a bias kind of cut. And I would, I actually like to make this sleeveless or this version here. Um, I don't like a lot of ruffles or fluttery things going on up there. I think it just makes me look too too bulky. Um, but I think this is interesting. I like this kind of a tear in the skirt and it has a really pretty silhouette and the line drawing unfortunately only shows the back of the dress. But I just think this is really pretty. Um, again, as I always mention, I don't like really um, full skirts and things and this type of a silhouette is great for um, it. I have like a kind of a slightly pear, almost hourglass body type and I feel like this would be somewhat flattering. So if you have the same situation, might be good for you. Um, this next one is Simplicity S9326. I think this is a newer pattern release. I think this is really pretty. Um, 
I probably wouldn't do the V with the ruffles. I'm just not a huge ruffles gal, but I like this dress here and I would like to incorporate this slit with this. I think it's just pretty, just a super basic dress. I actually think this would actually might be a good pattern for that yellow fabric I showed you before with the embroidery um, uh, border print, that bright pink uh, floral kind of like daisy print. But yeah, I just thought this was just a beautiful kind of perfect, um, could be date night, brunch, casual, whatever dress pattern. And yeah, I thought this was a really pretty pattern. And I saw the same gal that I saw that made this dress, made this one with some ruffles and it looked really pretty. Again, I'll link her um, in the description box below. And then the next one, I'm not really a big blouse wearer. I usually wear like a lot of just knit tops that are super casual with like leggings or skirts or whatnot, um, or I'm wearing a dress. But I thought this was a really pretty blouse. Um, this is Simplicity S9606. And I think this is just, it's got a really pretty silhouette. I like that it's kind of, um, I don't even know if you call it a peasant blouse, um, but I like that it's kind of mixing things up from like the, a lot of the milkmaid types of styles of blouses we've been seeing quite a bit of. And um, just a, a beautiful, beautiful cut, beautiful silhouette. And I'm leaning more towards maybe this or this view, not, definitely not that. Um, and here's the, line drawing. I don't know why they're only showing the backs of a lot of these line drawings these days. That's kind of strange. Um, I'm not giving you all the measurements of these patterns because we'll be here forever, but I will say one thing that has been nice about the big four, and I think I've seen other people mention this too, but it's something I've also noticed is that they're improving on their finished garment measurements. Before, a lot of times it was just like the length of the garment, which only does so much for you. That's, I think, an easy thing to, to eyeball. Um, but I'm noticing a lot of these patterns are finally showing like the finished bust measurement and finished waist measurement. As a lot of the big four patterns, depending on the pattern, I'm finding the ease is kind of, a, to me, it's a lot. Like sometimes I'm seeing that ease is like three or four inches from the initial measurements. So I'm happy to see that they're finally doing this. It takes a little extra time off view of measuring your pattern pieces. Um, this next one is Simplicity 9639. And what caught my eye was actually just the skirt. I liked the kind of uneven hemline here. Um, as I've seen on Mood Fabrics, they have these cool panels of fabric. So you don't buy by the yard, you buy by the panel. And it's kind of like this bohemian, paisley, hippie type of fabric that I'm totally digging. And um, I wanna purchase them, but I've been trying to think about the perfect patterns to use. And I think this could be like a very cute boho style of dress. Um, I think I actually wanna make maybe a variation like this in the fall, but I thought this might be nice for the summer months. So um, here's the line drawing again. They only show the back for whatever reason. But um, yeah, I just thought this was kind of cool. It was just a little different. And um, I might do this one because it doesn't have the ruffles. So you don't have to deal with all the extra gathering and whatnot. And then I have a couple more physical ones and then we'll jump over to what I got in the fold line, which were all of our indie patterns. Um, so this next one, I honestly don't remember why I bought this. This is Vogue 9328. I don't just mindly buy patterns anymore though. Like I have to have a plan. So I had something in mind when I purchased this, whether it was somebody else's garment that I liked or I just keep a life me. Can't remember why I bought this. It might've actually just been for the, the sleeve. I, not a good, I'm not setting a good example of buying mindfully right now. Um, I do know I liked a lot of these sleeve finishes. This is kind of a cool 70s style of dress. Um, I really like this silhouette here. And oh, I remember one thing that caught my eye. I'm always, I'm always intrigued with dresses that have some sort of like an interesting detail that you're not expecting. Like I showed you with the new look patterns, I liked the back of the bodice because it was a little different. So when a dress has like some sort of an element that just kind of, I don't know. It just makes it stand out. That's why I like patterns. So I think that, I think that might be the reason why I got this one, but I don't even know. Um, but here's the back. Hopefully these line drawings come in. I really like this detail here. I think that's pretty. This, um, I don't know if you call it like a cutout back or what it's technically called, but I think that's neat that you have a couple of different back options. So you have what? One ABC. Yeah. Is that six? Okay. <laughs> Sad I work in finance. It took me a minute to do that math. Um, there's six variations of the dress. And then you have two different back variations. And then it's kind of cool that they have this little diagram on here to give you an idea as to like what body um, shape is optimal for these styles. Not that you have to necessarily adhere to the rules of those suggestions, but it is nice if you struggle and you're kind of trying to dial in 
which patterns work the best for your body shape or your body type. It is nice when you have this nice little guide. I think it's only Vogue that does this right now. Um, but like I said, I'm kind of like a almost hourglass, but more of a pear-ish shape and says this works for me. So if you have the same body type, a triangle pair or hourglass, this might be for you. Um, yeah, thought this was cute. And this is probably going to be more of like a fall dress. And I just, uh, I thought they had some interesting details. So, okay, only a couple more. Obviously I got quite a bit, but um, I did de-stash quite a bit of my um, sewing pattern stash. And so, um, yeah, just really rebuilding. And it's, it feels nice, like I've said before, it's hard to let go of things when you feel like you should be holding on to them, but also, um, especially when you spend a lot of money, but it is so liberating and it gives you so much clarity and freedom when you let go of things that don't serve a purpose in your life anymore, because I feel like sewing is a lot easier. It's a lot easier to think clearly when you make things. And so it's nice when you start to mindfully rebuild what you've decluttered versus just mindlessly rebuilding. So I feel like I've been doing a pretty good job of that. Okay. So this next skirt, I think this is just like such a perfect summer sun skirt. This is um, Vogue V2033. I like this skirt here. Um, it's just really cool, really casual. And um, I don't know, I feel like I should be like on a beach somewhere, which I don't have any plans to do for a long time, but uh, maybe next January. Um, but this is a line drawing. And I thought this little detail here was interesting. This is the back view. Um, so yeah, I just thought this was kind of an interesting skirt. It's just pretty. And I think it would look perfect actually with one of the tops that I showed you earlier. Like if you made one of these types of tops um, with this skirt, I thought that actually could be a cute little outfit. And then the last one, I've seen a lot of people making this one. Honestly, until I actually saw it on some creators, I just didn't even give this a second thought. But I think this is pretty, again, kind of low cut. Um, so we'll see how that works. I'm about a B cup, a solid B. So I don't know how I'm going to feel about how low cut this is, but we'll see how this goes. And this is McCall's M8382. And I think this has got a really, really beautiful, unique style. I like, I do like this detail here. It's just a, just a touch different than everything else we're seeing right now. And I like the silhouette of this too. And this line drawing um, actually shows the front, which is nice. And I think this is interesting. I'm sorry, it's kind of dark. Um, it's a little bit overcast today, but yeah, I just thought this was pretty. It kind of reminds me almost of the 1920s. It's like very early thirties dress silhouettes too. So just thought that was an interesting one. And um, I don't know if I'll have time to actually make this this summer. Cause y'all know I have some pretty lofty plans, but I thought that was another one worth mentioning. And then I'll just show you, I just have a few that I got in the full line. Um, the ones that I've already shown you in the spring and summer sewing plans video, I'm not going to recap that because we'll be here for hours. Um, but there's a couple of patterns and also the patterns I just showed you, I, I think only a few of them are actually new. I think some of them are older patterns. Um, I don't care as much about following trends as I just want to make things that I feel like I'm going to feel good in and I'm going to wear for a long time. So, um, yeah, so this isn't like necessarily like a, sh so showing the trendy patterns. It's just kind of showing some things that have caught my eye drinking my Celsius again. Um, it's been that kind of day. So as for the full line, so the first thing I purchased, I think this pattern, it's a true bias pattern and I'll insert photos up here. I think this pattern's like five years old or something like that. It's definitely not a new one. And that's the Nova jumpsuit. And I like this jumpsuit. It reminds me of kind of, of some of the jumpsuits I'm seeing. I'm huge into natural fibers when it comes to active wear or just athleisure wear. So I like brands like um, Indigo Luna, uh, Studio K Yoga Wear. I wear the Buddha pants. Like I definitely dress kind of hippie and I really like a lot of natural fibers. And there's also this brand called, I think it's I Am Body or I Am Body or something like that. And then there's another one that's been really big into making jumpsuits, Ariel Latner. And this just kind of reminds me of those types of brands. Um, maybe at some point, if you guys ever care, I could show you some of my favorite like athleisure wear brands that are ethical or natural fibers because I just don't have really much of a desire to make a lot of that type of clothing um, just due to like time and money and things. But if that's something that's interesting to you, um, I've been huge into that stuff for quite a few years now. It's not all I wear, but it's a huge 
bulk of my wardrobe. Um, so if you ever want, I could make some content on that too. But anyway, but this kind of reminds me of the I Am Body or I Am Body jumpsuit. Um, it doesn't have nearly as fitted of a bodice. And as we can see, there's like basically two fabric panels to make up the top. But I, I'm all about these types of jumpsuits. Um, I think they're so comfortable. I will say, I don't know about y'all, but <laughs> the only thing I don't love about like rompers or jumpsuits is like when you go to the bathroom, you're like on full display. And I've said this before, that's like my only everything that holds me back from wearing those. But I just think this is super cute. And there is a, a shorter variation. I personally probably wouldn't ever make that. But um, yeah, I just, I thought this was really cute, even though it's a few years old and I would love to have something like this in my wardrobe. I do have um, a uh, jumpsuit by Ariel Latner, but it's a little bit, um, a little bit revealing. And so I think this is nice, kind of modest, casual. You could even wear it with like heels if you wanted to and make it look more um, like ready to go out for a date night. Or I think it's just perfect with sandals and I love it. Okay, this next one is another jumpsuit. It's called the olive jumpsuit and I have a jumpsuit by, I think it is Chintamani Alchemy. Um, it almost looks honestly so very similar to this one here, even the same color as this um, Untitled Thoughts olive jumpsuit. I like this because it has a waistband and um, I think it's super cool because you have a couple different variations here. You have a variation with more of a cuffed ankle. You can do like more of a wide leg if you're wanting to make it look maybe a little bit more dressy. And then there's a the shorts options too. And um, Untitled Thoughts, I've learned I think I need to size up. So I don't know if you might need to do that too, but that's that dress that I tried to hack recently and it was a total disaster. Um, but I think honestly I started out with a size too small too. So definitely just really be careful with your sizing with them. It could have just been like a total one-off of me just having a moment because we all have that. But um, I think that's really cute. I do know with Untitled Thoughts, the creator is stepping away from pattern designing. I think she's working more on writing books and things now. So she still has all of her old patterns up for purchase, but I don't think she has intentions on making anything new, at least not for now. Um, okay, this next one is a dress we've all seen. It's the Soho 7 Sovi Sundress. And... I actually had this pattern. I had all the pieces cut out to make a dress with some fabric I got from the So Haley Jane um, box several months ago. It was kind of like a blue and pink tie dyed dress. And um, my two male cats are having this territory war. It's crazy because we've had our male and female cat, Rocky and Pebble. Rocky's the one up there by the TV right now. We've, um, or actually I should take this back. We've had them for, we had them first for like two years. And then Charlie, our tuxedo cat, I can't remember if he's in or out. Um, he and Rocky never liked each other, but they tolerated each other. And then like a year into coexisting, they've now decided to pee on like everything in our house, which is just awesome. Um, if you have any tips of how to get them to stop doing that without just getting rid of one of them, please let me know because I love them dearly and I cannot rehome any of them. But anyways, to get to the point, um, I was going to finally make that dress, um, last fall. And I realized that that was a casualty of the cat territory urination war. So I threw it out because I thought it was disgusting. I threw out the fabric and everything. And not that you guys need that side story, but I'm back to Lisa's side tangents. Cause it's been a minute since I've given you those. So anyways, um, <laughs> so I repurchased this dress again, not that you guys even needed this story, but, um, the variation I actually really like is not necessarily the one with the elastic waist, which I know is a pretty commonly made variation. Um, I kind of actually like the one that is just more uh, free flowing and it has the side slits. And I think it'd be cute if you made a really thin belt or maybe even like made a corded belt and tied it up with that. I think this is perfect. It reminds me a lot of, again, Chintamani Alchemy and A Sacred Wear Styles of Dresses. Um, I love this in like a lightweight, just neutral linen color and yeah I like it I I'm sad that I lost the pattern the first go around but yeah I like this one a lot and I'm looking forward to making this at some point um I know it's been made quite a bit and I think this has been around for like four I don't know well, I don't even know how many years but it's been around for a minute okay now I only have two more left and this one um this is actually a pattern hack that I, I bought this specifically to hack a pattern it's the Soraya jumper and that is a, I think it's a fiber mood pattern. 
It's a long sleeve shirt, totally not something I would probably normally ever wear, but here is my thing. I'm going to show you guys the line drawing. So we can see on this line drawing that we have this, um, I don't honestly know what the technique would be called, but it's kind of like the, the drawstrings where you can pull them up and you can cinch up the top to make it shorter. And I got this because I want to try to pattern hack a spell in the gypsy skirt. I guess it's only called spell now. But anyways, I think it was called Spell in the Gypsy when I bought it. And actually, let me grab the skirt. So hopefully we can all see the skirt. This is, if, if my house is burning down and I could only keep one skirt, this would be my skirt that I would keep. It's just the most perfect, ethereal, flowy skirt ever. And it's a high low. And we can see here that with the shirt, how it's got the kind of like the drawstring where you tie it and forgive me if I'm using the wrong terminology, we have the same thing in the front of this skirt. So you can see the front detail here. And this is almost made out of like a, almost feels like a voil or like a muslin type of fabric. It's got two layers. And one of my goals by the end of the summer or by the fall is to try to recreate this. And I have a couple of high-low skirt patterns already to use as my baseline, but I bought this specifically because I wanted to take away that specific technique to um, essentially make these. I know I could probably have easily eyeballed it and figured it out, but I just thought, why not have a pattern to study that? And who knows, maybe I'll make that sweater. But I love this skirt and I was thinking about maybe making it in like, um, like a, a light brown or like a rose pink color or something like that. But yeah, absolutely one of my favorite skirts ever. I bought this actually secondhand. This is from several years ago. I think it's like the famous JLo skirt. If you're trying to look up this skirt online to buy secondhand, I think it's called the Spell on the Gypsy. I think it's called the sea Seashell Skirt. Or if you look up like JLo Spell Skirt, it'll probably pop up. But yeah, I bought this secondhand um, a couple of years ago and I love it. And I've always been wanting to find a way to pattern hack it. I think that's the only skirt they've ever made in this kind of style and it's just perfect. I love high-low skirts. It's, they're my favorite types of skirts as they're easy to get around. You don't trip on anything and yeah, just perfection. So that is why I bought that sweater pattern um, is it's just to give me a little bit more of a guide to do this, even though again, I probably could have totally eyeballed it, but I thought, why not? Okay. And then the last one, the more I was looking at it, it was honestly kind of similar <laughs> to a pattern I got from one of the big four, but it is from Society, and it's the Ella wrap dress and top. And um, this also was inspired by those brands, A, A is Sacred Wear and Chintamani um, Alchemy. I'm still probably saying the name wrong. Um, I really like the dress variation, um, the wrap dress that we can see here. I think it's really pretty. And I like the little detail. Um, at the sleeve, it's just slightly gathered. It's not like an actual yoke style, but there's a little bit of gather, so it gives a little bit of a feminine touch. I really like the fabric in this photo, this yellow with the white flowers. I wish I could get that and just make this because it's super cool, but I thought this is really pretty and I actually like the top variation. I'm gonna include the line drawing here for you all to see, um, actually of everything, but I like this like cool bell sleeve top and technically where it ties, you could just cut it off slightly below there. If you don't want it to be a really long shirt, you can make more of a cropped variation. Um, I often just crop my tops, not because I want my midriff hanging out, but because I have a really short torso. So my waistline, the smallest part of my waistline hits higher. So I often get buy crop tops and they just fit me like a normal top. Um, so yeah, so these are just some patterns that I thought were interesting to share because they're ones I personally have added to my, uh, my collection and ones that I know I will actually integrate in my wardrobe as I'm no longer just buying patterns because I think they're cool. Um, I'm buying them like either with fabric in mind or when I buy fabric, I have a pattern in mind. So I'm not just mindlessly adding things in just because I see something that's neat. So, so yeah, so that is that. Um, if you all have any suggestions of some interesting patterns that you've thought of um, that maybe it would be great suggestions for everybody to try out that maybe fit in this style or something totally different, feel free to please leave them in the comments below. You all have always have such great advice and um, I get so much inspiration from just seeing everybody's makes or seeing people's tips and things. And I think it's just such a cool community that we all have to um, be able to share ideas and inspire each other and, and all that. So anyways, I think that's it. I kept you all here for 30 minutes. So this has been very long winded. 
But um, yeah, this weekend I'm gonna start with a dress because I do have to start studying for my Series 7 exam. Um, I was hoping to do Me Made May, um, but I don't know how things are gonna go. I, I don't really wanna study right now, I just wanna sew. But um, yeah, so this weekend I'm gonna start in the Linda dress and then we'll kind of see where everything takes us. I've thought about doing a sew along and I'm like, I don't know, would that be boring? I don't know, what do you guys think? Like, should we start doing some sew along videos or no? I don't know, but I'm trying to think of some different uh, video ideas and things to bring to you all in the coming months. And yeah, okay, so I'm rambling on enough. I'm gonna cut this off here. Thank you so much for stopping by to hang out with me today and I will see you all very soon.